Well, hi again, everybody. It is homecoming week at Robert E. Lee. The Red Raiders host North Garland on Friday night at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium and Earl Campbell Field. And the Red Raiders are on a two-game win streak, and they have both been wild ones. They beat Garland 51-47 this past Friday night at Williams Stadium in Garland. And Coach Daryl Piskey is with us. I guess we should be glad you're here. Your heart's okay. Uh, your blood pressure is back to normal all now back and all to that normal. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, got a smile on your face. Everything's better when you win. It is. I mean, like you always say, your wife's food tastes better. And that uh, you coaches all have these funny yeah, things right. you like to say about Everything's that kind better of stuff, when you right? win. Dog looks better, you know, and it's just everything. <laughs> How about you? Do you look better? No, I, it doesn't help us. It doesn't but, help uh, you It helps much. us inside. Well, you, these last two games, I mean, of course, you had the uh, bye week after the Lakeview Centennial game. But 59-54, double, trailed by double digits in the second half. You trailed by 19 at the start of the fourth quarter on Friday night against Garland. Uh, what's the deal? Just can't make it easy? Well, no. Uh, you know, luckily, you know, we screwed that Lufkin deal up. So now we know it can be done. It doesn't matter how far you're behind. Yeah, We've seen absolutely. it done live. Okay. But, uh, no, uh, you know, the kids the other night just kept battling uh, just like it did against Lakeview. Uh, defense, you know, different this time as the defense played really well the second half. Uh, you know, which which allowed us to do that. So hopefully we'll start that from the beginning this next week. So what did they do in the second half they weren't doing in the first? Well, mainly looking at the film as they were getting off blocks and, and fitting right. You okay. know, uh, you look on film and the safety and Mike Backer pretty much stacking on each other on their fit versus one fit in one gap and the other one fit in the other gap. And then uh, they were getting blocked and staying blocked. And then second half just – you know, they made a few adjustments personnel-wise, the uh, defensive guys did, but the main thing was just looking at them on film. Second half, they weren't staying blocked. They were, you know, getting hands and uh, getting off and getting on, uh, making the tackle. So, Coach, how do you bottle that for 48 minutes instead of 24? Well, hopefully we figure that out. Uh, you <laughs> We'd know, all be rich when you do, right? Yeah, yeah, but just the kids, you know, seeing that that's a pretty physical team. I thought yeah. we matched their physicalness. I know uh, – uh, Parkin Barker was out there knocking some heads off a few times, and, and I think that's contagious. Maybe we can, uh, you know, get that uh, spread throughout the whole defense where they want to just tear somebody's head off. I, uh, I'm sure we'll see the, the plays coming up here in just a moment, but uh, just a word about uh, uh, you got a young senior, Mason Parker, who, uh, in my opinion, I'd be the MVP of the team right now. He's made big plays in the last two games defensively, and he's not even a regular defensive guy that have turned, kind of turned the games around. Yeah, he, big interceptions. he's just a competitor. He you is. know, comes by it honestly. And, uh, you know, he's, he's going to get in there and compete, and he's going to want to fight the whole time. And, you know, got a personal foul the other night, you know, after we fumbled that punt and uh, got an unsportsmanlike for maybe saying something <laughs> wrong. The official told me what he said, and I said, well, I'm sure he did. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's just because he's got that competitive nature right. in him. And, and, you know, that's what you want, just a little guy to get in there and get it on. Well, and so uh, what this win does for you, it puts you in position, the position now you wanted to be in. you got a chance to really do something now, don't you? Yeah, you know, it keeps us just in our own hands. You know, the destiny's in our own hands. And, uh, you know, we'll have to figure the old tiebreaker system out and how it's going to be uh, interpreted. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, at least it keeps us alive and keeps our own destiny. We went out, you know, then it's a no-brainer we'd get in. Now, this is homecoming week. Uh, what are homecoming weeks like if you're coaching football? Well, nightmare uh, for us, you know, just because all the distractions and every day's a dress-up day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got a Monday night, you got a, you know, a parade and pep rally and right. stuff on Monday night. And, you know, there's something going every day. So just get the guys to stay focused on the – the fact that we got a football game to win Friday night, uh, you know, is the biggest challenge. Make that homecoming week and that homecoming dance on Saturday a whole lot more fun if you win this game, right? Yeah, and, you know, that's what we worry about. A lot of them more worried about that dance on Saturday and the dress-up days during the week <laughs> than they are playing North Garland. And so, uh, you know, likely, you know, a lot of times you like to get it out of the way in preseason before you start to just play, but, you know, it's unavoidable with our schedule the way it is. And, again, now that you've won two in a row, it you don't want to give all that back. North Garland – You'd be favored to win this game, obviously, but uh, you don't want to give all that back. Yeah, that's right? right. They're much improved. I mean, the little quarterback's fast. Running back does a good job. Uh, they got some decent size up front uh, on both sides. They've got a few guys. You know, I think they got five that are going both ways. Uh, you know, so uh, we have to keep pressure on and, and uh, stay after them and try to, you know, get them fatigued towards the end. And I saved the best for just before the highlights, but Zach Hall, back in the lineup on Friday night. Um, how did Zach play? Well, he really did pretty good. You know, we uh, had talked to him and, and, you know, knowing he's going to be a little tentative and a little nervous on mm -hmm. that thing, as we all would. And so, uh, you know, early, of course, he, you know, 
slid a lot and tried to get down, not to get too much contact. He didn't run it a whole bunch in the beginning. Uh, he was more on keeping his eyes and just using his feet to, uh, to buy time to throw it downfield to somebody. So, and that was good. So now it'll be where maybe he'll get his conditioning, game conditioning back uh, this week and just get better and better. Uh, young Chance Amy's going to be awfully good. What's his role going forward now? For well, you? he's, you know, played some receiver before Zach got hurt, uh, you know, and we're going to do that. And like I told him before the game the other night, you got to be ready because, you know, it's one play and mm -hmm. it could be back yeah, to you. Absolutely. So you got to stay mentally right, mentally ready. Uh, that's what backups do. Uh, you know, if they can help the team somewhere else, which I think Chance can and did early in the year, uh, then they got to be willing to do that. But they got to have their mind right that as soon as they go down, the starter goes down, then they're one play away from being the starter again. Well, just ask the Cowboys about those backup quarterbacks. You're in better shape as a backup quarterback than they are. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, we, we're in pretty good shape. I don't uh, know what Whedon's been doing, but uh, we're in pretty good shape, you know, so that helps. Yeah, okay. All right, let's roll tape. Again, the Red Raiders uh, rallied from 19 down starting the fourth quarter to win 51-47 at Garland on Friday night. And here's Zach, first play. Yeah, it's pretty early, buys time. Mason finds a void in the defense and then, you know, makes a good run after the catch. But that's just Zach buying time and, a uh, little 44, I say little, he was a pretty big guy, was cramping pretty good by the end of the night. And you'll probably see lots of highlights where uh, he's ended up doing this, trying to chase Zach down. Yeah, that's a nice play. And that probably wasn't the original route, right? He just No, he uh, broke it off. Uh, once Zach scrambled, he had to break it off. But that's a heady play by two seniors. Yeah, that's right. Right? You know, here's a little nasty set, we call it. Got a good block off the edge there, and then Tyreek gets enough of that outside guy. I mean, uh, that's Devon either Dante Wesley. or one of them. Was uh, it Wesley? No, or Wesley Dante? had already done, kicked okay. out his, but it might be Wesley. Yes, yeah, Tavon. Normally he'd get a good cut right here. There but you go. Just enough. Got his head yeah. on the wrong side. You know, chipped him enough to make it Tyreek's fast. Up. You don't need a whole lot. Just kind of get in that guy's way and make him hesitate, and Tyreek should run by him. Yep. That on defense it. here. That was a good job. That's Campbell Miller stepping up in there. You didn't see a lot of those in the first half, which is his first half here. But I think Campbell had two fumble recoveries yeah, for you, did he? Yeah, not? but he did a good job there of fitting and bringing his feet when he tackled. And yeah, nice job by Campbell Miller, the junior inside linebacker. Here you go again. This is Tavon, right? Another good, that's a good jump cut Tavon made there and then had the speed to go, go the distance. And that's the difference between him and last year. He was yeah. good last year, but now he's got some pop yeah, this that's year, right. right? that's right. And really, you know, you, you look at the highlights, and he did a good job, but, uh, you know, he didn't have his best game blocking-wise. And so, you know, that's good to see that we win a game against a good team, and Tavon didn't have his best game, and Zach didn't really, you know, wasn't Zach yet, but that's a good sign back on defense again. That's Mikhail Sanders coming up making a play. Mikhail's got really good at that. He comes up, he, once he reads a play, he's yeah, pretty quick you know, he's, When he's not tentative, when he plays it soft and slow and gives them space, then and he uh, has problems. But when we get him to play like that and we talk to him about just playing with confidence and mm -hmm. letting it hang out, and if you make a mistake, make it going 100 miles an hour, he does pretty good. Defense, it's John Samples here. He was your player of the game, wasn't he? Yeah, he did a good job. Uh, him and uh, he was on defense, and then Mason and uh, mm -hmm. Barker were the offensive MVPs. And then Samples was actually special teams MVP blocking a couple of kicks. He did. So, again, you got good uh, – just a good job. Is this all – this is not all second half action either. No, no. It? We're in the first half. Kind of shocking to see defensive yeah. highlights in the first well, half. Well, he was there. Just, you know, they're giving up Well, third and long plays. and okay. fourth down and five. We jump – you know, we line up off sides as a DB and stuff like that. This is a little bit more Zach Hallish here, isn't yeah, it? That's yeah, that's right. What he, what he He's does He's still here. got the burst. Uh, it's still there. And that's number 44 again. But, uh, you know, just making sure he gets the yards, get the first down. There's Dante John. No, that's Tyreek downfield blocking. You know, some of these were on key third and long situations. Keeping the play alive. There's Zach again, and he finds Ajuwon. And that's what Zach brings to the table, and Ajuwon, all those guys know that he's going to jitterbug around back there. If they can just find a void, then he'll find them. 
44 just, uh, I think he likes Zach. You know, I saw him after the game, after the, uh, the players had shaken hands. I saw that kid make a point to come over and shake hands with the coaches. Yeah, there was a couple of them. It's kind of impressive to yeah. me. I mean, we're there. Their guys. Kids. That's right. Uh, a couple of them did. The big quarterback did, and 44 yeah. did. And, uh, you know, even those of us that wasn't in the handshake line with all the kids, they walked over. Right. Absolutely. I, I noticed that. I thought, well, that's, that's cool. Good for Yeah, you. they got classy kids. Coach does a good job. That's right. Tavon again. Uh, Parker and looks like Dante downfield trying to block. Devon. You know, when they run through there about 10 yards and nobody's touched them, you got to know the old line's doing a pretty good job. Devon had 112 in the game. Now, yeah. Who is this running here? That's Tavon That's again. That's Tavon I think. again, yeah. Now, with Day Day Thacker gone, uh, Tavon is going to get the bulk of the workload now, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So he. Uh, now he's capable. He can handle capable. it. He can yeah, handle absolutely it. Absolutely can. All right, good run. Leading to good things as the. Uh, that's Mason Parker off the edge and guys downfield blocking for him. Zach made a good read getting it to him. Yeah, a little bit closer look at it. This is all second half stuff too with Mason. You see Tavon get his block right there off the edge with a good cut and then, you know, 15's out there in space by himself and most of the time that defensive guy's not going to win that battle. No, this is first half. Mason's run came in about midway through the second quarter. Okay. It's going for two here. Even in the first half, you guys were hanging right with them offensively. Now, they scored right before halftime. Yeah, I mean, that yeah, was frustrating, we blew a, but. you know, I'd say blew a coverage. Kid was in position, didn't make a dang play. Uh, but, you know, there's Miller coming in on the defensive side. He's coming in there at fullback. And, Zach did a good job of reading that. I think we're still in the first half here. Again, Zach buys some time. Eyes up, finds Mason out in the flat. Dante comes back and gets a good block. Picks up about 12 more extra yards. That's just experience on, on Zach's part. I mean, as you watch him here, a lot of quarterbacks with his kind of ability would be looking to run with it, but he's yeah. keeping his eyes down yeah, field right. looking for a, somebody to throw the ball to. That's a mark of a quarterback, yeah, right? Yeah, that's learning how to do it. Them guys up front, they were sure tired. There's 44 chasing him again. Mason does a good job after the catch. He does. Yards. Ball at the 41-yard line. Yeah. This is still – Still first half, I think, play 98. That was a freeze play, and then Barker makes a great catch and run after the catch. They jumped off sides, knew we had a free play. Just a 41-yard touchdown pass to uh, Ajuan Barker, whose name gets butchered uh, at PA – by PA announcer uh, I bet the district it, yeah, on the road. Yeah, I bet it does. <laughs> yep, they clearly jumped off sides, and Zach had the yeah. presence of mind to figure what the heck. Jump ball, he's going to win most of the time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And that's what Zach throws. He throws a nice little jump ball for uh, eyes one and those guys to have a chance to go get. Now we're on defense here and uh, get a little pressure. Calhoun lets him slip out, but I think that's knee dryers right there with him to help mm -hmm. him out. Get a little fumble and turnover. Campbell Miller. Yep. I think knee dryer got the strip though, didn't he? Yeah, on one of them he did. I don't know if that was it, but uh, we'll be able to tell here that might have just been Campbell over. No, nope, knee dryers over. Here he gets the strip. Campbell falls on the football. Knee drives like a little energizer bunny. Mm -hmm. He goes hard the whole time. You know, we had a little guy out the other, the other night. We only, only had three D linemen, so uh, the D linemen had to go the entire game. Had to go the entire game. Wasn't any uh wasn't Tell any me that's not all the highlights. No, it's not. That, that bottom era. Yeah. Because we'd be getting so, so much of the second half when it really, really got good. it one good. more time. 
Hopefully we'll be able to get those those highlights up there. We want to see the second half. We'll talk while they work on that. There you go. You might try going back because we were on 98 um, before that. While they're working on that, just what joy is, of technology. Yeah, what does North Garland do? Well, they, you know, they're going they're going to run the football uh, out of a spread set. Their little quarterback number two is really fast. Uh, they, they roll in several running backs, but uh, 22 uh, probably has the most speed out of, out of all of them. Uh, defensively, you know, 3-4 scheme, and they're going to play some cover two. They're going to man up on us some. Mm -hmm. uh, they got good size, uh, 57 and uh, 60. Uh, pretty good guy, pretty good size guys. Uh, 57, 50, and 60 actually end up, they play both ways. They play on I offense noticed that, and that they have a lot of kids yeah. playing both ways. And then their outside receivers, uh, 8 and 9, actually play some def – or 7 and 9 play defense also. 8's inside receiver. Uh, and uh, he doesn't play much defense, but 7 and 9 do. I think we kind of had five guys. What's the story have. over there? They uh, – uh, Garland has kind of been the best of the Garland ISD schools, and then of course they've taken in Rowlett and Saxe. But yeah. what's the story, North Garland? Why have they not been been able to? Well, they've been down for a little while, and uh, you know Joe's a, a graduate of North Garland. Coach uh, Coach Kiss still is a graduate of North Garland, and uh, he's uh, you know he's doing good, getting the mind right first. Right. You know, when you've been down for a while, it takes you right you know a while to get those kids to fight and battle and and uh, do all that stuff, uh, they give up too early. So he's getting, doing a good job. Like I say, it started on the track. They won the district track meet this year. Uh, so that's a big deal. Uh, you know, there, now you can scroll down to go to, and go to about yeah, number we're 90. trying to find the uh, second half highlights. It'd be a shame not to go have to 108 right <coughs> the second half highlights. Just click on it. There you go. Uh, would be uh, should be good now. Need to have those because that's where the uh, real fun started, right? Yes, yeah. For the defense, offense, you know, was having decent fun all night. But uh, yeah, this is play here. Okay. So that's the deal. He's getting the mind right, and he's got them. You know, they won some games early, and uh, you know, won a district game already. So they're ahead of schedule. Uh, you know, I know their JV last year was a pretty decent little JV and got after it. So he's doing a good job. All right, this is a tight, tight look at it. This is the same play we saw yes. earlier, the yeah. strip. I'm assuming we'll continue on after that. There you go. Again, uh, knee dryer, we think, with the uh, strip. Yeah, Miller and, with uh, the Campbell recovery. Miller with the mm -hmm. recovery, one of two. He would have a, one later on that would be even bigger yeah, that's in right. the game. <clears throat> All right, this I think is second half stuff, right? Yeah, I think we start the second half now. Got a tip ball there by Calhoun. Did a good job not getting pressure, so he jumped on the quarterback's release. You know, Cameron does a good job of getting underneath that little yeah. flat route. You know, a second half comeback like this takes everybody, literally. You yeah, made a good uh, – there was an onside kick recovery that you made. Yeah. That was kind of a surprise. You know, but so everybody has yeah. to step up, don't they? Yeah, everybody. Special teams is doing a good job. Here's a – Parker does a good job of stripping this ball out, and then Isaac one at safety finishes him off right here. You know, I didn't uh, – well, it was, it was Mason's interception later that fooled me. It looked like they came down together. I thought their kid had made the catch no, for a moment. No, uh, you know, Mason, he's going to take it away from him yeah. at the bottom. The kid Eisenhower. had it for a moment, and Mason just took it away yeah. from him, didn't he? Here's That's guys, later on. Yeah, this is everybody right here fitting right and stringing it out, not giving him a lane to run through. Yeah, watch that. String it out. Miller's inside. Uh, Sanders fighting across. And then you got your corner, Mason, coming up overlapping contain. You know, down here, I believe this is the series we held him to a field goal. Uh, yeah, that's, first and goal to four, maybe. Yeah, that's little Coates and uh, I think Coates and, and Holmes here do a good job of driving him backwards. But that was a big win to hold him to a three. Yeah, did hold he him. even make? Did he make the field yeah, goal? Yeah, I think he, he did make the field goal, didn't he? After a long, that's John Samples. Uh, that's it shows decent strength right there because that running back wasn't a little lightweight. Uh, you know, they ran the ball hard, and he just kind of grabs that big quarterback and says, hey, come here. And he's a good physical-looking kid, that quarterback was. Yeah, Jacoby Williams, I believe his name. 
About 6'2". Yeah. yeah, solid, thick looking. They had a running back I was impressed with, Terman, I believe yeah, is his name. That's he was right. pretty good. Yeah, they had some big, good bodies. That's Ajwan breaking up a ball there on that same series, third and five. Ajwan's done a good job also crossing over. So good job by the defense, and again, the whole second half they played. Yeah, that's Held them to seven points in the second half. Yeah, that's John Samples again. You know, you just look, if, if you knew what you were looking for, looking at their fits in the first half versus second half, is just totally different between mm -hmm. the safety and the Mike backer. Here's Zach on the rollout. Just dumping it to Tyreek there. You know, it's almost like playing basketball uh, in your driveway. It's like, hey, get open and I'll throw you the ball. I don't think he scored here, did he? No, he didn't. Mm -hmm. He got stopped short. We're at the one-yard line. So go ahead and punch it in. I think this is, yeah, this is Zach's it. touchdown, isn't it? Or Tavon. Uh, 163, I think it may be Tavon. This again. is Tavon. This is early fourth quarter. You're down 19 at this point. This cuts it to 11. Yeah, it's Tavon again. Because you're going to go for two here, right? Yeah, no. I think we do here. Yes. Without seeing the scoreboard, I can't yes. they all kind of run together when you score so dang many points. It's like asking the basketball coach who made that third jump <laughs> shot when it's 70-something to 60-something. But anyway, you cut the thing to 11 because you, you went for two and made yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. So now it's a two-score game. You need a break. Here's Mason's interception. And here's the break. Really thought Ajuan would get that one, and Mason came took it away from both of them. Again, both the kids had their – their guy had his hand on the ball too. Yeah. And originally from my vantage point, I thought for a moment that he'd come down. Yeah. I called it originally, made the catch, and then realized, no, I don't think so. I think Mason's got that well, ball. Well, Mason's got the you know, inside leverage and went up and high-pointed the football. And then took it away. See what he did there on the ground. Yeah. That's just good football play right there. Wasn't yeah, it? it was good. And Ajuan was over the top. Like I say, really, I thought Ajuan was going to get it. But anyway, Mason, Mason Parker's interception it. sets you up, and you're going to go down and – Another little jet sweep over here to Tyreek. Score. And this, you know, this makes it a one-score game. Yeah. Yeah, nothing not to like about that. What's this? You know, when you look, Mason and Dante blocking off the edge, and then – you know, like I say, Tavon usually makes that cut 100% of the time. But And you're going to get two more. Two-point play. Uh, good little route by one and O-line giving Zach time to let him clear underneath. All right, this is important because this makes it a three-point ball game. Yeah, that's right. And then when you score to take the lead, then they have to score a touchdown yes. to beat you. So yeah. this turned out to be – a little big play yeah, in the right. game, that two-point conversion. There's a lot of math involved. Uh, I guess math teachers would be proud. But uh, <laughs> It's 47-44 here. There's a lot going right. on when the score's going like it was, trying to figure out. That's knee dryer there. does a good job of grabbing. So you need your defense to give you the ball back, right? Mm -hmm. And they're going to – They're going to do it uh, down here, I think. Right here, maybe Campbell's fumble recovery. Yeah. Again, that's another one. Get lost in the pile there. You kind of, you, you know, realize until it's happened. Well, those officials, they really did a good job. I mean, that was really a good crew. Uh, you know, the face mask penalty that they called that caused Mason to fumble and gave us the ball in 30 yards. Uh, you don't normally get that call when you're on the road. That's Campbell Miller coming up with it there. And this is where we start the drive. Uh, go back downfield. That was it right there. You know, they face mask and Mason fumble. They could have easily yeah. interpreted that to give the ball to them. And but the face mask happened before the fumble, which negates the fumble. Yeah, right? they, they deemed it caused the fumble. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, they had sideline interference, ran into their coach down here, so we got an extra 15 for that. So, yeah, I didn't pick that up originally yeah. when it happened. He might have been a little bit on the field, <laughs> maybe the numbers. <laughs> but. Uh, You know, and you just, you know, they just, like I say, the crew did a good job. The head referee uh, blew his calf muscle in the first half. Uh, so they were shorthanded, and they got a guy to come in 
uh, that would live there in town to, to help them out. And then sideline interference. One of their assistant coaches got out on the field? Yeah. Uh, he kind of ran out there, and you can see it on the end zone camera. He was out there. Now, this gives you the lead. This is Zach Hall. Yeah. You know, because it's really good to score there on that third down, then it makes the decision a lot easier on fourth down mm -hmm. when you're thinking, heck, you want to kick a field goal and tie it, but you really want to take the lead. All right, you're down 47-44, so you score here to make it 50-47, to 47, and the extra point makes it, 51. Makes it a four-point game. Mm -hmm. Now we're back to the start. And then uh, uh, to end it, um, your guys uh, held them on a fourth down, got the ball back. Yeah, defense uh, held them on that series. We got the ball back with two minutes left. You know, just basically had to run out the clock. We had to get one first down. Now, in a perfect world, if you could have beaten them by 10, did you tell me there was a tiebreaker type well, thing that you might know, it's have gonna, come into play it there? It depends on how that's, uh, you know, who interprets that what way. Uh, right. it, it says that the points are used strictly to break ties, not to advance. Uh, so we had kind of gone through like coaches do on the weekends and drawn kind of the worst case scenario is we felt like if we won by 10, worst case scenario, that would guarantee us to get in. Uh, that's why we didn't kneel on it right after that first mm -hmm. down. We ran one play. Uh, you know, I just chickened out and said, hey, you know, <laughs> if we fumble or give them the ball back and lose this game, then we're stupid. So. We decided we'd take the four and point. And that game. actually happened to Michigan on Saturday. Well, that's Michigan. yeah, yeah, that's right. You see stuff like it's that all the time. It can happen, right? So we said, hey, let's just take a knee, and then yeah. we just, you know, we still control our own destiny. Let's win the rest of them and not worry about it. I was going to say, you win the other, win these last three. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's right. You could, I mean, you. you I guess there's even a scenario. Browlett is still undefeated in the district. Yeah, right? I mean, it's still, uh, you know, uh, four and three uh, could easily, it depends on what goes on the rest of these games, but, you know, if we were to end up four and three and, and Saxe and uh, Garland end up four and three, then uh, based on the tiebreaker points, uh, Saxe would, they right. have the most points because uh, they lost to Garland by four and Garland lost to us by four, but Saxe uh, beat us by the, the positive 14 points. So. Uh, interpreting that, you would take that team out, so they they advance, and now you go to head to head, and we beat Garland, so we would be that fourth spot. Quick note on injuries: anything of note from this past week? No, I think uh, you know, I think we're going to be all good. Uh, uh, Breckle got his foot stepped on uh, there during the game, but he should be fine. Uh, our concussion kid from last week. Uh, Corey Green should be back and be fine, so I think we're all good. And uh, just the importance of this game. I mean, it's homecoming, but forget about all that. I mean, you've got to keep on keeping on. Now you've won these two games, don't give it back, yeah, right? Yeah, we, ha we have to win this one, you know, and so that's what we've got to look at all week is just knowing we've got to win this football game. It's homecoming, and again, a lot going on at Robert E. Lee this week for homecoming, but the biggest thing is the Friday night 7.30 kickoff at Earl Campbell Field at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium against the North Garland Raiders. Red Raiders uh, looking to make it three in a row, and certainly on homecoming or any night when the Red Raiders tee it up, they need and deserve your support. For Coach Piskey, I'm Bill Coates. Thanks for joining us. Thank <laughs> you.